everyone. Thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. It's with a heavy heart that we say one final goodbye to pro-Israel activist and longtime ILTV contributor Ari Fold. Fold was the victim of yesterday's terror attack outside a shopping mall in the West Bank, where he was stabbed ultimately to death by a 17-year-old Palestinian terrorist. Late last night, hundreds, if not thousands, gathered to mourn Fold at his funeral, which was held at the Gush Etzion Cemetery. News of Ari's death has gathered mourners near and far. Top European, American, Israeli, and UN leaders have all passed along their condolences to Ari's family. Ari was a father of four who served in the IDF, before coming to be known as a fierce pro-Israel activist with the NGO Standing Together. As many of you know, he was also a well-known media figure and frequently contributed to ILTV for many years as a correspondent in the field, an expert guest, and as the co-host of our Frenemies show. That's his professional life, but as a testament to his personal life and conviction, even his final act before death summed up the kind of man that he was. After being fatally stabbed in the upper body by his attacker, Fold managed to pull out his handgun and shoot the fleeing terrorist before collapsing to the ground himself to prevent a similar fate from befalling anyone else. United States Ambassador to Israel David Friedman praised this final act, calling Fold an American patriot. Similar statements were issued by Israel's French and EU ambassadors, along with echoes from Israeli President Reuven Rivlin and Prime Minister Netanyahu, who paid a personal visit to Fold's family shortly before his funeral late last night. This is a truly difficult goodbye to a cherished friend. Mere hours after mourners gathered to grieve the loss of Ari Fold at his funeral in the West Bank, IDF forces raided the Palestinian village where his killer lived. 17-year-old Khalil Youssef Ali Jabarin has been identified as the terrorist who fatally stabbed Ari Fol. Troubling reports, however, have already surfaced suggesting that the killer's parents actually warned IDF and Palestinian police that he was intending to carry out a terror attack that day. The IDF has confirmed that Jabarin's mother did, in fact, report to soldiers at the Meitar military checkpoint near their home, telling soldiers that their son had disappeared and intended to commit a terror attack. At the same time, Jabarin's father, who had had an argument with his son mere hours earlier, told Palestinian police that his son had disappeared and may be a risk. Both sides apparently mobilized to question other relatives, but as we know, those plans ultimately came far too late. Jabarin committed his terror attack around noon yesterday, stabbing Fold in the back before being shot by Fold and other armed civilians shortly thereafter. IDF security teams raided the village of Yata late last night, searching the home of Jabarin and measuring it for a planned demolition in the wake of the attack. The Palestinian mayor of Yata issued a statement condemning his resident for committing an act of terror, but with many across the world mourning Fold's death, clearly this is a pain that won't be diminished by mere words alone. As amazing as Israel is with its natural wonders, there are some things the Jewish state just hasn't cracked yet. After five consecutive years of drought, the Water Authority stated that the deficit in Israel's natural water reserves is substantial. The authority said that even if we have an above-average rainfall this year by the coming winter, the Sea of Galilee will still remain beneath the red line by the end of next winter. And that's without pumping water from the sea for the national water carrier. The Water Authority added that by the end of this past summer, all the country's resources are in the worst situation in years. For example, the Kinneret, or the Sea of Galilee, whose water is currently at 214 meters below sea level, is expected to continue descending by one centimeter every single day. Now this severe drought of the past five years primarily affects water sources in the north of Israel, but the rest of the water sources in the country are also having huge shortages. There's a deficit of around 2.5 billion cubic meters overall. But on the bright side, Israel has taken numerous steps in preparation. A statement issued by the Water Authority says that, quote, the Water Authority continues to prepare to respond to the increasing trend of dehydration in the entire region. At the same time, the Water Authority is working on increasing efficiency to prevent water waste as a permanent lifestyle, end quote. To that end, two large desalination plants are being planned as well as other steps to supplement water sources for everyone. The Authority is also developing tools for forecasting flow and streams to different periods of time in order to enable all elements in the economy to prepare and plan activities and investments wisely and effectively. Clearly, climate change indeed requires all of us to carefully manage and prevent water waste in any way possible. Just two weeks after Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte made his monumental visit to Israel, Israeli munitions company Silver Shadow Advanced Security Systems, or SSASS LTD, has reportedly signed a deal to open a factory in the island nation by next year. Duterte signed over 20 agreements, at least 14 memorandum of understandings, and eight letters of intent with Israel during his trip. They are all worth a combined estimated $83 million. 
And indeed, Israel has been selling arms and munitions to the Philippines for years. But that's where controversy has entered the frame. Aside from his inflammatory remarks like comparing himself to Hitler and how rape is inevitable with pretty women around, Duterte has been embroiled in a drug war that has cost nearly 12,000 lives and imprisoned tens of thousands more. The Philippine president has been accused of human rights violations by many Western countries, including the United States, and in fact Israel pulled out of a police cooperation expansion deal over the Justice Ministry's objections. Regardless, quote, these agreements are a clear indication of the enormous business and investment opportunities in the Philippines available to Israelis, end quote, according to Philippine Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez. And that means we'll likely see a lot more deals like this in the very near future. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.